Hey, yo, it's me, Pops Fan Marmalade, and you're watching the Comics Related Madness Network. Uh-huh. So come get some. Cromcon. Cromcon. America's southern border has become a war zone. Human traffickers, drug smugglers, and terrorists flow across the Rio Grande with impunity, secure in the knowledge that no one will stop them. A distant federal government lectures Americans on their privilege while punishing overworked border patrol agents who were helpless to stem the tidal wave of invaders and determined migrants. Second-generation Cuban-American Marcos Zamora is a military vet, more patriotic than most Americans. No longer able to ignore the chaos at his doorstep, he acts. Joined by his best friend Gus, they hit the border every night, saving lives while stopping violent drug cartels and other opportunists. The government reacts with fury at Marco's attempts to preserve American sovereignty, deploying the full might of their enforcement agencies. But Marcos understands that the only thing the rich and powerful fear is bad publicity, and he records every encounter. Whoever he is, this private American must be stopped. Illustrated by Richard Bonk and written by Eisner winner Mike Barron, Private American is his version of Captain America, and maybe a little Punisher, taking part in this ongoing, violent, and very real battle of good versus evil in the war for American sovereignty. Grab your copy at theprivateamerican.com. We have a secure border. And that is a priority for our administration. And now for something. Pay attention to me, boy. I'm not just talking to hear my head roar. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. What is wrong with you? The doctor is in, baby. Good morning. After missing last week, it feels like a month since I've been here. <clears throat> so good to see everybody this morning. Mm. The best part of waking up is some hot ass coffee in your cup. Let me bring out my co host. Rose? Well, we're going, we don't need Rose. Gordon Shumway, nice to meet you. Interested in a new Buick? Nonsense. I've not yet begun to defile myself. I'll make you famous. I'll make you famous. <laughs> Good morning, Tanner. Good morning. Good morning. We were we were chatting backstage, having a good time. So I hope that same vibe keeps going. Uh, this oh, morning. definitely. Let's see if we if we have anybody lurking in the chat this morning. Be sure to give us a good morning. Uh, not a soul commenting. Oh, wow. I'm so hurt. I'm hurt. I'm wounded. Maybe we need more commercials. That's what it's got to be. More commercials. That's what the world needs. <clears throat> Good morning, lovely Kate. Kate's having to wait on an inspector for, I guess, insurance purposes this morning. 
So she's on the waiting game. You know, when they say we'll be there sometime between January and, and, you know, December, be sure you're home. <laughs> Bless your heart. You got to do that. <clears throat> um, Pops is producing for us as always backstage. Uh, glad to have him with us. Morning, Pops. <clears throat> and good morning to you, sir. Thank you, as always, for your dedicated service to the comic book industry, to the independent comic book industry, <clears throat> which we all somehow belong to. How did we How did we get here, Tanner? How did we get here? How does a person end up doing a morning show on Thursdays on YouTube for comic book? Really? How does that even happen? <laughs> Lou, good morning. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> Lou, we got to have you out sometime soon. Oh, uh, we do. Lou is a is a natural uh, uh, broadcasting talent. Oh my uh, God, I know, right? I think you missed your calling. Uh, <laughs> you should be doing <laughs> radio shows. You should be doing a live stream every damn day. I would tune in. So as we move on, uh, yes, I know, Pops. Pops is saying, you got to promote CromCon. We will. We will. We will. <laughs> CromCon. <laughs> CromCon, you're muted. Go away. <laughs> I said Lucifer's going to be there since you're talking about him. Promote yes. the weekend. Yes, 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 yes. This is not my first rodeo. We shall. Um, <laughs> And, uh, and promote we shall. And you know what? You wanted the best. You got the best. Go, go. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, CromCon is a good time. It's all weekend long this coming weekend. Uh, we're going to have a variety of guests out, including Lucifer Storm. Uh, I am the co host of CromCon along with your your, uh, your 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 mega host there, Pops Fan Zant. <clears throat> my, uh, my uh, participation is always limited to how long my ass can take sitting in this seat <laughs> because that is a marathon. How Pops has done this for all all this time now is beyond me. Uh, <laughs> you like the way the puppet says the word. <laughs> you just get the puppet to do it next time. <laughs> my job. You like by, how the puppet does it too. <laughs> have my job threatened by a puppet. Jeez. <laughs> So how's Bloody the weather puppet. down in the in the lovely Savannah, Georgia, this morning? It's freaking hot. It's hot. It's how, hot. And what's the weather in Antarctica today, Tanner? It's fucking, fucking hot. cold. It's, fucking <laughs> cold. <laughs> it's why it's the, been, the glaciers are melting. It's, it's been your hot. weather update. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? You're, the, you, you're a step ahead of me. How dare you? <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna dive right into a, a, a brief news segment this morning <clears throat> for a brief talking point. Next, another interesting story that's in the news. So in the news, accused parade mass killer. Uh, Daryl Brooks was found guilty on all 75 counts, and he was quoted as saying, I do not consent to being called by that name, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't see that trial, you did yourself a disservice. Um, uh, bless his heart. He, he, he He's an evil little man, and he decided he would represent himself as a sovereign citizen. If you don't know what a sovereign citizen is, I encourage you at some point to binge watch sovereign citizens on YouTube. You will laugh until you die. These are people that have a belief system about law that has nothing to do with reality, but they are convinced that it does. So nothing applies to them. Uh, they are above the law. They are sovereign, meaning a king, and they are above all law. 
So watching an idiot sovereign citizen mass murderer uh, get his comeuppance. You know what sucks, though, Doc? It, it doesn't matter where you're born. Those laws are your laws. That's right. It sucks. That's kind of what the point is that they're trying to make when they go into a courtroom. Is that, man, I was just born here. I didn't agree to any of this. Well, you know yeah, I mean? he, he was wanting to ask... Uh, stupid questions like is this an admiralty court or is it a or a private court well, so he couldn't even get the words right he meant yeah, maritime right. that yeah. up too yeah. <laughs> you know he was he was just an innocent boat captain traveling <laughs> and people happened to get in his way and these road pirates came and abducted him well you know um, the stupid courtroom's got that fringed flag and everybody thinks that means it's a maritime court. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the actual reason for the same captain's mass, yo. <laughs> yeah, it's, all, all three of us serve, so we all know this. For those of you who don't know, all it means if it has the gold trim on it is it's the colors as opposed to the flag. That's it. That's it. The official colors, case and standard. <laughs> um, <laughs> he invented new words like objection, your honor, relevancy. 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 The word is relevance, you fucktard. Not relevancy. There's no such word as relevancy. It does yeah, but exist. making up your own words is part of being a sovereign. Yes, it is. Making up, language. Your own laws, <laughs> making up your own laws. Making up your own laws. That like making up pronouns. Genders. It, it, it's a lot like that. All yes, that it's the, the modern <laughs> fantasy world that we live in. Look, Although I will say, the sovereign citizen <laughs> thing has been around a lot longer than the pronoun thing. But, okay, but okay. look, the sovereign citizen thing gets way <laughs> less credit. You got to put way more work into that. You do have their own flag. No, but they, they have their own paperwork they carry around. And typically, they will become a sovereign citizen when their license gets suspended. <laughs> because then they're going to travel with this paper that they'll give to a cop expecting him to buy it. Look, this says, I'm just traveling. It's your own law. Uh, I'm not driving. I don't need a driver's license. You know, And usually, they're still screaming that as they're being pulled through the broken window of the car. And yeah, I don't need it. I don't need it. I do not consent. I do not consent. I do not consent. Uh, nobody cares. Nobody cares. My mama, I ain't doing what it. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I whole. I highly recommend Donut Operator here on YouTube. He's a retired cop who owns a skateboard shop. And uh, he breaks down videos, and he has Sovereign Citizen Bingo as a game of all the typical things oh, they'll say. Yeah. It's a great time. Go over to Donut Operator and give him a look. That's You'll enjoy easy. it. That's, that's too easy. <laughs> Sovereign Citizen drinking, that's way too easy. Bingo, not drinking. Well, same thing. I mean, how <laughs> many times they say something, we got a drink. You know, yeah, let's turn this into a it drink. Game. Well, we go, drinking are the same thing. <laughs> we got a drink. All the little old ladies down playing bingo, slugging back shots of Johnny Walker. He, you think this is coffee? <laughs> I'm sure you get on tell that I'm still having a real problem with my right eye. It's like Katy Perry. <laughs> yeah, that was in the news. Was that Taylor Swift or Katy Perry? That was Katy Perry. I always get those two confused. Oh yeah, 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 Katy Perry. Where, where the lizard disguise failed her, and her and her eye just kept fluttering shut. Yeah, yeah. She, don't have a lizard she, disguise, yo. <laughs> she was, as she was hey, saying, Kate. "Be sure to go get triple vaxxed." <laughs> 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 That's crazy, isn't it? Man, I you know I have no comment on that. None whatsoever. No commentary, no nothing, just damned odd. Now, somebody said, if you haven't seen it, I did not download that footage because I didn't think I'd do that in the news, but we'll do that as well. <clears throat> Katy Perry's lizard disguise slipped a little bit. I personally think her false eyelashes just got stuck together and she was monkeying with it to get it to open, but it kept happening. You know, it just kept happening, and it's like it's <laughs> too much, they put too much black stuff on her on her eyebrow or on her eye. Yeah, like, yeah. at some point, I would together. rip the damn thing off. You know, ah, I get out of this thing. I don't need that. Um, Why would I'm you never, put gigantic fake shit on you anyway? Oh, never mind. 
Like I said, never mind, never mind. Look, I got my implants. I'm proud Hollywood. When I was about, I don't know, 25 or 26, my sister came to my house, my oldest sister. She knocks on the door, and I open the door, and she's standing there with this brand new big old set of titties. And she's like, do you like them? And I'm like, Don, you know me all my life. What what about fake if I ever liked? Yeah, right. Same one thing that's fake that your brother has been 100% behind. You I don't like him. <laughs> I was like, you know. John like, Candy <laughs> on his then, beach then vacation. She's like, you want to see him? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I mean, that's straight out of that John Candy movie where they go to the beach. And <laughs> the neighbor lady and her husband are sitting there, and she goes, I just had my boobs done. Whoosh. Do you yeah. like them? Do they look real? And he's like, ah. This is the worst part. My brother-in-law, not the one she was married to, but the other one was with her when she came to my house to show off her. What's wrong with you, girl? Listen. I don't know. What's wrong with you, girl? There's a strip club down the road. You want to go show them? Go show them the girl. Guy, ladies, is what we're saying. I don't want them. If you were gifted with big old bazoongas, God bless you. If you were gifted with sharp little nubbies, God bless you. God bless you. I'm going to tell you this as a man. We don't give a shit. Tatas are tatas. Boobs are boobs. You want to stop traffic, just take that shirt off. We will stop. We will salute. Anybody that's with you because of your boobs or your butt is a shallow. Well, yeah, but I mean, I am a shallow man, Pops. I'm just going to say. Ron White I mean, said it best. Once you've seen one set of boobs, you want to see them all. <laughs> I love that, man. He is a national treasure. <laughs> also in related news this morning, um, Nick Ricada is back. For those of you that are yeah. out of the loop, Nick Ricada is a very popular uh, law streamer and uh, crazy man. And uh, he, was, he had a, a false mass flagging attack pull his channel down. He is back up. Uh, he will not live stream for <clears throat> a few more, uh, probably two weeks until the strikes roll off. But you can find him over on the uh, Rumble where he is live streaming if you want to go over there. I have a Rumble channel, Pops, and I may. That dude has a big play. enough. That dude has a big enough channel. He should be paying us for that kind of promotion. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, I'll <laughs> right? say this, dude, he is one of the top earning super chat live streamers in the world. So why are we giving him free ads, Doc? <laughs> because I like him and he's a good guy and that's just how I roll. If I like you, I'll give you a shout out. Um, speaking of shout outs, I'm going to drop a link here just momentarily. Here, here it comes. I'm going to cut. Go to comments. My son who is an amazing musician and songwriter, only has 35 subscribers. There's his wow, link. Man. Get over there and subscribe to my son's channel and tell him Doc sent you so he'll know Dad was giving him a shout-out on his show. Uh, very good music. My son is amazing. That's not just a dad saying that. That's a musician saying that about another musician. Really good. Um... I'll second that. Yeah, yeah, he is. He's he's quite good. I may share a video later on on the show. Uh, let me see here. I've got messages coming in. Okay, that's uh, that's Lori Calcaterra telling me to take a long walk off a short pier. She's not coming on my show today. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's got things to take care of. We were going to invite her out to uh, hang out with us since Kate couldn't be here. But instead, we got pops so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Where'd he go? laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, Lori just looks like she would at least try to whoop your ass. You know what I'm saying? Whether she can or not, she's she's somebody who would definitely give it a go. 
You don't want to mess around with that. I'm Fuck around and find out. He would probably kick most of these guys' asses. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, no doubt about it. I, I'm saying whether she can or not, the willingness to do so is there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Be sure you leave him a comment. And free the internet. Good to see you. Indeed. Oh, me. Let me get back oh. over here. Oh, well, there's all kinds now of Now, that's another here. guy. Free the internet. You'd like, you'd like to watch his stuff, Doc. You'd like to watch his stuff. He has some very interesting conversations on his channel about strange fucking shit. I would, I would probably love to give that a go and probably <laughs> will. Um, here's the problem with that, as, as we talked about before. If I watched all my just my friends streams oh, i know right i would never get any more done or sleep uh so i try to sample them and bounce around um i want to give a shout out this morning there's several people going through some stuff health wise but i'm gonna call out any names uh you know who you are you reached out to me my thoughts and prayers are with you i wish everyone good health and prosperity and peace uh and comfort so god bless you wherever you're at uh just know people care. People care. There's still good people. It's a bad Maybe world, but there's that. good people in it. So on that note, <coughs> uh, uh, we're going to get into our meme review this morning. Q, uh, how you doing? Uh, what's up, Q Continuum? Good to see you, buddy. Oh, I see. You're going to come out and holler at Pop Santana, but not the doctor? Wow. <laughs> Oh, wow. man. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a meme review, shall we? On. It's time for meme review. So here we go. Tanner has Tanner themes his, so I thought I would theme mine as well. Uh, mine, I only brought three uh, and two backups, but mine are simply called "That's Cute." So, meme number one: Modern music is just hard. Uh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Gangsters. That's cute. You know, you could just see the real mobsters, the organized crime, the families going, what are these people joking? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> My ride, rice burner. That's cute. Enough torque to get up on one wheel. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. All right, and then let's get into Tanner. Tanner's theme this morning is metal. My personality? <laughs> My fetishes. Just, aren't they a cute couple, Tanner? <laughs> aren't, so adorable. Aren't they just adorable? <laughs> when you show your friend or allow them to listen to a metal song for the first time, and their ears bleed. But the important thing is she's not complaining about it. See, Damn that's skippy. the thing. That's the thing. When it melts your brain, but you love it. <laughs> Obama, 2009. Trump, 2017. Iron Maiden, every single fucking Friday <laughs> around the world. Stadiums packed. And that's most metal bands, by the way. I mean, so true. I don't think they really do arena rock anymore. You know, uh, those days are gone. But if you lived it, you know it. A band would come and they would pack a stadium to overflowing. Oh, I know, right? One of my bands uh, back in the day was Kiss. Not so much now, but back in the day was Kiss. They had 160,000 people at one show. At that time, it was the world's record for the largest audience for any event. It was in Rio de Janeiro. You can look it up. Bam! Posers wearing Iron Maiden shirts. Crazy Eddie. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that's how he feels about it. 
There's power metal, death metal, black metal, Celtic metal, doom metal, folk metal, Viking metal, pirate metal, progressive metal, traditional metal. <laughs> that's that, that, that's about all. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, Pops, I brought this one in as something that can just linger here for a while. <laughs> Now, there's a different version, same picture that says ever here, it gives you Forrest Whitaker. I seriously thinking about just keeping this one there just for future use. And then, of course, there's only one of these has actually fought fascism, and it's the straight white male <laughs> on the left, not the anorexic basement dwelling mama's boy uh, on the right. And because, of course, this is a coffee show. Uh-oh. There we go. There it is. There it is. I don't come to life until coffee, although my coffee does not come out of a cure egg. Just saying. Uh, Pops, did, did you add these? I don't see color until I've had coffee. <laughs> but after I've had a pot, I can hear color. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes, <indeed>. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> An open letter from Twitter employees was sent out with their demands of Elon Musk. Hmm. As Elon is just going, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> I'm firing 5,000 of you on Monday. <laughs> pew pew. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, golly gee, it sure is a good day to stare at the ceiling and cry. Hell yeah. Let's see what we got here. Most people don't want to be part of the process. They just want to be part of the outcome. But the process is where you figure out who's worth being part of the outcome. Absolutely right. So true. So true. If you're not willing to put in the sweat and the tears and the ultra attacks and the panic attacks, you don't get to harvest the rewards. You're muted, Pops, by the way. If, if you're part of a team, if you're being part of a team, you got to be part of the team. You that's know, right. you got to put in your time too, man. That's so, all. If, um, if you didn't row the boat, I will throw you overboard. Well, no, it ain't even that. If you don't Steven row Bean, the boat, the money? If, if you're not going to help row the boat, why would you want to be around for the for the um, what's happening at the party when we get to the island? Um, you want to go to the party with us? Fucking help us get there. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Kate, what have I done? Kate, what have I done? How dare you? How dare, How dare you? you? And she remembers getting her ass pinched at concerts, I'm sure. Look at of me course. following the plot thread. Good Look time. at me. Good time. You're supposed to Vic. just rub them real gently, though. You're not supposed to fucking grab and pinch. Vic, guys. it's good to see you. I uh I was at a concert in Savannah at the Civic Center. Won't say the name of the band, but Ted Nugent was the opening act and he was who I was really there to see. And uh moshing was a new thing. <laughs> well, uh, oh she's how dare you on the Keurig machine. Listen, listen, Kate, I'm sorry. The Lord thy God has said that Keurig is an abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not do it. Okay, I'm just saying. So anyway, moshing had just become a thing. And I'm there with my wife who is pregnant. And we are on the rail at the front. I've got my arms around her. I'm a big, strong guy back then. I was on active duty in the military. My buddy, same thing, him and his wife. were, the, And they started moshing. And I didn't know what was going on. I thought a fight had broken out. And they started kind of piling onto my shoulders. And it's getting to be a little too much to bear. So I, I gave a couple of friendly elbows just as reminders. So... Uh, if you're the guy I did that to and you're watching, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to knock your teeth out. Um, <laughs> but you shouldn't have been trying to crush my unborn son. That's all I got to say. Um, so, yeah, that was a thing back in the day. Shit happens. <laughs> it happens. It, these things happen. And I'm I'm just so sorry. I didn't mean to. But, you know. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> So that has been meme review for today. Can you imagine, though, Elon Musk has said he's going to fire, I think it's 5,000 Twitter. That's it, yeah, but then he went in there yesterday and he said, I met a whole bunch of really nice people at the Twitter headquarters. It, we don't know what's going on. Dude. It doesn't matter. He's I hope fire. they're going to fire all the all the truth 
guys, the back checkers. Yes, and, yes. Listen, you know, listen. But, I know, Pops, I you are as skeptical as I am of anything, big money, big government, anything. We're all skeptical. I mean, I want to believe. But I want to believe, just like I you said, believe, that Elon Musk is going to roll his build, wheelbarrow build, full of balls in there <laughs> and clean house. In the meantime, though, as an alternative to Twitter, let me point out there is a place you can go. Hey, I'm Max DeVille. Over there. Hey, Max DeVille for building us a place where we can yeah, go to like, porn Max. bots or news feeds uh, like fucking CNN and Fox and, and where I can go say any fucking thing I want to. Period. Well, I get kicked off. Related. Comic related. It's free still for speech. Comedy. It's, it's free still for comedy. comedy. Yes, but it's free speech. Yeah. Don't censor me. They're all supposed to, to censor speech. me. You but when you get into Same. when you get into the land of politics <laughs> and left and right, then everybody's free speech becomes a mess, dude. Nobody knows how to talk. Everybody just wants to fight. I don't fight. You know? I express myself and I leave dumb people behind. I mean, that's why you Twitter turns into up. a mess. It's because nobody knows how to communicate. Yeah. You know? Hey, uh, so I've got a question. I've got a question. I have an answer. I'm Lucifer stalling. likes it. Yes, Lucifer likes it. I'm stalling as I scroll here. <laughs> oh, is Quentin sending me memes? I'm sorry. Let me get these up here, guys. Okay. But not till he comes in later. Oh, so yeah. Here's a question. <clears throat> under my name right here, or under my little face, it says, Doc Blaylock, pariah, blood and mud. I have not been pushing my product for quite a while. Please, would it be all right with you guys if I did so now? Yeah. Do me a oh, favor yeah. and head on over to Indiegogo and sign up. You'll get an exclusive trading card when you back the book when it comes out. <clears throat> Looking at February, when everybody's getting some tax returns and the new government is in place, and maybe inflation's a little bit better. And uh, trying to make it cost effective for everybody to back that project. Hey, Faz, what's oh, going yeah. on? Good to see you. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. What do you think about that there, Tanner? Oh, I love it. Yeah, man. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, man. Uh, me either. I'm so excited. I can't wait until I finish drawing the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I want some cool art. Oh, wait, I can make cool art. I think I will. Um, the music, the first part was written and performed by yours truly, engineered by my son. The second part is from some old friends of mine back in the day, a band called Damnage, D-A-M-N-A-G-E. Uh, back in the 80s, a pioneering thrash slash heavy punk band. Um, the lead singer has passed away since then, unfortunately. He was a friend. Uh, the bass player kind of gave me permission to use that particular song. <clears throat> you can find their material on the YouTube. Just look up Damage. Hell yeah. You'll find it. It's good stuff. So, yeah, there's that. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think, chat? 
sign up. Help, help. I need help. I need an adult. <laughs> oh, you fucked up. <laughs> I know, right? You Boy, said you need an adult in this? I'm totally in the wrong this, place. This now. Fire aren't, industry? Oh aren't I? So, sorry. I'm suddenly having every morning of my life, gentlemen. <laughs> I have a cold for about 10 minutes. It's just now kicking in. Here it comes. So, you know, it's just it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> May as well deal with it. Not a whole lot I can do about it. <clears throat> Beautiful timing. It's all about timing. It's all about timing. timing all about is, timing. Timing is everything. And then my air conditioner decides to start making noise. I don't care. It's hot. It can run. And I've got on a zip-up fleece. So that's genius and I have to get rid of timing I'll be at the Grand Rapids Comic Con November 11th oh, yeah. 12th and 13th look out look out for me we'll have some fun Tanner you changed mugs don't think I didn't notice <laughs> I sure did <laughs> <laughs> I come prepared I lost my product placement doc the sticker came off the bottom oh, oh no gotta look, get a new man, one we were talking before we came out today before the show started <clears throat> my timing is always terrible because i'll come back and i'll start setting up and i've got a nice hot cup of coffee and then about the time i hit thank you quentin about the time i hit go live my cup is now cold so then it's i've got to find the time to run in there and warm up my coffee so i said <clears throat> i'll just go get one of the big yetis we've got i'll fill it up with piping hot coffee it'll stay hot till tomorrow you know no, no. The wife took the last one with her. She takes them to work all week and brings them home on Friday, and we wash them. <laughs> so there was none to be had this morning. They're all gone. So I'm like, well, just damn it, man. Now I'm stuck with cold coffee again. <coughs> White fire, what's going on? Warren, what's happening, brother? Hey, White fire. Halcon, where's Halcon? Hey, where's that oh, at? Oh. What, we'll bring it back even up. if you go as a fan, Doran, you make you network, you make connections with people. You tell them about the madness. Tell Doran, them it is good stuff. to see you too. Thank you do. for popping yeah. in. Oh man, um, memes are sent. I keep double clicking something on the right that makes all the controls disappear for a second, huh. and then I panic and I click it again and they come back. So that's that brief look of horror you see on my face, <laughs> like I had boomered it up completely. Yeah, the people in Halifax, Nova Scotia need to know all about the madness and Doc's channel and what Tanner's got going on. You know that everywhere you go, everywhere you go, you spread the love for everybody you know. That's right. And That's Vic, thank true. you very much for that. Yes, be sure you hit that like button, share the stream out. And by the way, Kate says, Tanner, how did the uh, one chip challenge, challenge yeah. go? Yeah, now, I happen um, to know. How it went, but you tell us all about it. <laughs> um, well, it, it was me, my wife, and uh, my son. And uh, I'm telling you, that was the most disgusting one that they've had year to date. And I really? think it had, some, yeah, they well, they 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 gave it a gimmick where it was blue and it had this blue covering on there. Ugh. And it tasted so it made made your tongue blue and everything. Mm -hmm. But it was See, nasty. It was yeah, so nasty. And it wasn't the heat, the heat. The heat I could have handled. The heat was fine. You know, I could have gone longer. But two minutes in, I had to get that god awful taste out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> you, know? you know what I'm saying? So, this, um, we got we got uh, laughing rogue that makes the the sauces, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. He's making a Carolina Reaper madness sauce. Ooh. Oh, man. I got to get some of that. <laughs> this, is gonna, this is not going to be a Mexi sauce. I think it's more of a barbecue, a hot bump. But I told you, nice. I have flavor. Put that I on said, your if ribs. it doesn't have flavor and it's just hot, then. So for like wings and ribs, that'd yeah. be great. So, um, Chris okay, sent me a, a jar. He showed me the recipe, dude. Yeah. He showed me the recipe last night and the Reapers. You got the jar of reapers too, you know it. <laughs> nice. And you gotta weigh that so you know exactly how much for your next recipe that you put in, so it always right. stays the same, you know. I was like, fuck yeah, now, dude. madness I'm, sauce. I absolutely love spicier the better. All right. Yeah, True story. 
I'm going to tell you a true story now. I told this to Chris. That's why he sent me mild. Um, a few years ago, one of my buddies that lives in Arizona, he had grown oh, yeah. some ghost chilies, some scorpions in his backyard, and he made the devil's own anus of <laughs> salsas. <laughs> Arizona is the shit, dude. I'm telling with, you. With comes fresh, <laughs> fresh tomatoes, which are never as good as Georgia tomatoes, but these were pretty good onion and the and the heat <clears throat> the peppers so he mails this thing to me and i tried it it lit me up but it was incredible tasting so i just couldn't stop oh, i ate the yeah. whole jar oh i know how that came out <laughs> I ate the whole jar in one sitting and I turned to my wife and I said, <laughs> and fire came out of my mouth and burned her to a crisp. No, no, the lips. So, the lips will be on the bottle. That hold on. Lips. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, within a day, I started hurting. And I'm talking about from my navel to my neck, just the worst pain. It felt like I had been run over by a bus and it kept getting worse. And I thought, well, man, my appendix must have ruptured or some shit. So I go to the hospital because you would, and it turns out, long story short, I had killed all the healthy bacteria in your digestive tract that keep peristalsis, the normal movement, happening. I had paralyzed my digestive system. Oh, so for yes. the next uh, maybe nine days, I could only do yogurt and toast and whatever as it tried to recover, and it was painful. It hurt. I was out of work for like nine or ten days. <laughs> And uh, uh, when I recovered, by the way, my wife made me a tuna sandwich on the first day. I thought I could tolerate something. It may as well have been prime rib from God. It was the most amazing <laughs> thing I ever tasted. It was solid food, right? Anyway, I called my buddy after all that was over. I said, dude, he said, how was the salsa? I said, you hospitalized me. No, you story. hospitalized you. Yeah, because I was a dumbass. <laughs> so anyway, I told Chris that story. And Chris sent me a jar of his mild to medium. And I'm like, <laughs> I was going to bring it out and live taste test here on the channel, but I don't have any chips or anything. And it's an abomination before the Lord to not do it right. I mean, yeah, well, I was pushing to... it when he used the Pringles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to use a Pringle to taste yeah. test the tail rider sauce. That's all we had, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and that's pushing it. That's pushing the bounds yeah, of what is acceptable to before the, the Lord thy God. I figured, I figured the Pringle, you know, we can get away with at least tasting the sauce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like what Mitch Hedberg said. Do you think the owner of the Pringles company was originally going to make tennis balls? But on the day the rubber was supposed to come in, it was just potatoes, and he's like, fuck it, slice them up. <laughs> the story about Pringles can um, a Pringles can will hold three rolls of one dollar bills. Perfect. Yes, I know. I know. Okay. Um, I used to live with the lady that worked at a club, right? And we used to get one dollar bills a lot. So I just roll them up and stuff them in Pringles cans, right? Read between like, the lines, kids. <laughs> I had about fifteen of these Pringles cans in in my closet, right? And uh, my mom, she's one, she's getting ready to buy a car or something. No, they were get, putting the down payment on the house. And she goes, I need $1,500. I said, come on down. I got you. You know, <laughs> I mean, all this money just sitting in the closet. It's not like I was doing anything with it. It was just sitting there. Right. 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 And so she comes down and I bring, bring out five Pringles cans and I put them on the table in front of her. And she's like, what is this? I was like, $1,500. You're good. Go. Just mashed up roll of ones in there, but they perfectly yeah. rolled three hundred dollars each. The regular size, original. Yeah. Can. yeah, you know, it's perfect place. And you know, look, the robbers come through your house and they they're not the Pringles Pringles Pringles. Pringles. Yeah, they just think they're a crazy person. Well, they are now. Pringles. Way to go! <laughs> yeah, you you've blown that one now. <laughs> I mean, I could just see on the on the price of the car on the car lot. It's you know, it's this much money or this many Pringles or three cans. Pringles cans. <laughs> <laughs> it it was crazy though. It was like she just kind of she did you know. I mean, 
obviously she knew what my girlfriend did at the time. It's like she knew where the ones came from. And she kind of asked me later, she goes, those were all in her panties, weren't they? <laughs> no, no. Somewhere in between her boobs. Yes, yes, yes <laughs> that's right. The boob sweat is plainly visible. Yeah. All right, like, it's time for a little segment on the show we like to call... <laughs> Great Good moments morning. in comics. Good morning. Tanner Hurley here with the, one of the greatest moments in comic history. 1989 in Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, man. <laughs> James O'Barr created the magnum opus that is... Eric Draven, the crow. <clears throat> so what what's made this so amazing? Okay, well, if you've been living under a rock for like the last, you know, 50 years, <laughs> you <know? laughs> and you don't know what the crow is all about, it, it is a, a book that was inspired by tragic events that happened in his life. And in 1981, when he was stationed in Germany in the Marines, he, as a way to, you know, uh, deal, you know, with the, the catharsis, cathar, is that a word? <laughs> catharsis. Yes. As a cathartic measure to deal <laughs> with his measure. loss. To deal with his loss, he created The Crow, which debuted in uh, the Caliber Comics Christmas special, number one, which I, I owned many many moons ago and i uh, didn't make one of my my many moves from the military or else i'd be showing that off but this amazing book spawned four movies countless series amazing music yes yes that this is on vinyl <laughs> nice nice, nice. <laughs> so <clears throat> Okay, why is this a great moment in comic history? Okay, yeah, I, I get it. It came after, you know, the Dark Knight Returns and, and all the other uh, 80s superheroes that kind of ushered in, you know, the, the dark era of comics. The, the Dark Ages, yeah. The Dark Ages. <clears throat> um, but if it weren't for The Crow, you, you wouldn't have a lot of the indie classics that you have today. Um, yep. Basically catapulted. Uh, indie comics into superstardom uh, with the crow and you know has basically generated a, a whole generation of, of goth loving yes yes saw house rocking uh the, the, <laughs> you know, the, the pop crow, loving the crow made indies viable again yes there were there were other indies out there but the crow was just it so just, if just, you don't have yourself a copy of The Crow, and I'm not talking about IDW, which don't get me wrong, Kyle Hotz's versions are, are pretty stellar and in keeping with the original stuff. And I'm not talking about McFarlane's uh, Image Comics, The Crow, which is good as well. But get yourself the original Crow. You won't regret it. You will not regret this. James O'Barr, The Crow. <laughs> This has been Great Moments in Comics with Tanner Hurley. Yo, Thank you, Tanner. Yes, Thank you. If you haven't, you have to. And by the way, <laughs> go look at uh, Wizard Magazine when the crow was all the thing. 
oh, and, uh, and, and and look at all the people cosplaying as Eric Draven. Oh I my mean, God! I every, did. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everybody did. Everybody was the pro, you know, except me because even though I was thin and nice and ripped, I was blonde. <laughs> I was blonde. I'm not going. I, I can't pass this, Eric Draven. <laughs> it, the, the first movie, I enjoyed it immensely, even though it's cheesy as all hell. Um, <laughs> it was still, it captured the spirit of it. It, and, it did. And what a tragedy we lost Brandon oh. Lee on that set. I know, right? It's terrible. Now, don't get me mad. That was good. That was good. Don't don't make me mad. Don't bring that shit up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know. Uh, I'm uh, actually really looking forward to uh, the the next movie that's coming out. They, they've had Obar involved with. And, um, oh, God, I can't remember the, the actor. The He's a Skarsgård. Um, played played it. God, what's that kid's name? Um, but any, <laughs> you know, good God. But anyhow, he's going to be uh, Eric Draven, and uh, you know they're doing a. I, I believe it's a more faithful adapt, adaptation of of the Crow, and I, I think he's going to pull it off. Honestly, what what was the line that that Draven says to the mother of the little girl when he pulls the poison out of her veins? Mother uh, is the name for God on the lips, the lips and of, hearts of oh. all children. <laughs> Nice. Look, man. <laughs> I owned a copy. It was VHS. I paused it and wrote that shit down because I was like, that is fucking writing. That's writing right there. Yes. Now, uh, James O'Barr is an amazing person. I've, I've met him on a few occasions, and everyone was just twice as stellar as the the previous one um yeah. he's he's so gracious to his fans um and, and very very humble actually mm -hmm. you know it, it, when before the mcu let's put it that way the crow there was a few indie uh or there were a few let's put it this way there were a few comic book movies out there and I would watch behind the scenes making of The Empire Strikes Back, this, that, and the other, and they would always show the storyboarding. And my thinking was always, a comic book is a ready-to-film fucking storyboard from beginning mm -hmm. to end. Let's just do that. And then lo and behold, you know, I loved Iron Man, and it is touted as the kickoff for the MCU. But a few years before, very quietly, Marvel said, we have made some turd burgers of movies. Let's see if we can sneak one out there without saying this is a comic book character and make it good. And it was called Blade. And it kicked <laughs> ass. Yes. So in my mind, that was the birth of the MCU. You're muted, Pops. Oh, no. Don't you hate it when you have something profound to say and you're muted? Speaking of Blade, um, when uh, I was doing a show the other day, somebody showed me a copy of the magazine and UK with the very first appearance of Blade. Nice. And I was like, dibs! <laughs> <laughs> so that one will not go to sale to the general public as dude slowly unloads his campaign, or his uh, collection. Um, I'm just saying. I, I, I got that. That's a good one. That's a good one to have. Yes, it is. Hey, here in just a moment, we're going to take a break and pay some bills. Pops is going to run some commercials for you to warm up your coffee, ladies and gentlemen. But before we you do, mean it's for you to warm up your coffee. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> right. But before we do that, uh, I haven't even made a stinger for this yet, but there's a new segment called Doc Helps You With Grammar. So here's today's entry oh, for that. Shit. Okay. There's no such fucking word as empathetic. It's empathic. <laughs> Deal with it. I get so tired of hearing that. All right, Pops, play us some commercials. Let's everybody take a break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? Let's do, uh, how about... Six Gun about Gorilla. Oh. Uh Kid. But there's a 
secret history to the Old West. One that seems too strange to be true, but... Well, we all know what they say about the truth. finally ready to hear the story of the strangest, the most startling western hero of them all. Six-Gun Gorilla. Long days of vengeance. Bringing you sex, sass, and style. Buckle up and unlock your imagination for a fun adventure with these death-dealing dames. They sail the galaxy in search of spoils. The most dangerous acquisition, and the most fruitful, are the legendary Splinters of Yggdrasil. The Splinters are magical artifacts forged from the Tree of Life that wreak havoc on the universe. The missions are perilous, but the bounty is glorious. Enjoy our hyper-fictional wonderland. How is a pirate ship sailing through space? Cause magic. How do they heal so quickly after battle? Cause magic. How are they able to communicate through jewelry? Cause magic. It's all about the characters. Abo, rough, robotic, ready. Mo, carefree, callous, courageous. Mistress Graven, daring, diplomatic, dominating. Betsy, academic, accountable, Aristocratic. Nefara. Ancient, assured, adrenaline junkie. Brudo. Proud, prominent, protective. Fisty. Independent, incendiary, invigorating. Roxy. Superficial, scarred, secretive. Once you get to know this diverse crew of mythical miscreants, you'll be anxious to find out what trouble they'll get into on the next episode. Go to abogrizzly.com and order both halves of the first episode today. And we're back. And we're back. Everybody got fresh coffee. Everybody got a stretch. Everybody good. No, I yes, just yeah. do this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Splinters of Yggdrasil. That is one of my all-time favorites right now. Do you I, like it? I, I, I have I have every I have everything that they put out except for t-shirts because they ran out. Um, <laughs> but I am their biggest supporter. Abo puts out amazing work. Doc, you got an echo, dude. No, I don't. Um, that's I'm hearing one. I I'm on my same. Are uh, you got an echo, Doc? Yeah, you got an echo, Doc. What? Well, I don't know how that's possible. I, I don't hear anything. You didn't hear it because I muted him. I, I don't, I I don't hear an echo. Before. Not now. I was. I was hearing an echo. <coughs> no. I still hear an echo. <coughs> I don't have YouTube even open. so. I'm just saying. I hear an echo somewhere. Well, I mean, I'm not disagreeing with you. I don't hear it. Do you hear it, Tanner? <laughs> I don't. I really don't. <laughs> Chat, do you hear it? One, if you do, if you don't. I know that. I don't hear it when I mute you, Doc. That's what I know. I just, Think I twice if you're under duress. <laughs> <laughs> I need a grown-up. I'm in danger. <laughs> um, I was going somewhere. Oh, let me remind everybody. I'm going to drop that link again. If you guys enjoy just plain good rock and roll that leans a little bit on the heavy side, I'd like you to go like over and, rock and, roll. and show my son 
some love. That's that's his channel, I think. Let me make sure I clip the right. How you doing, brother? Past Master Dan, good to see you, buddy. Uh, uh, yeah, I think I, I grabbed the right one. That's my son's channel. He's a musician. Uh, Seems Lucifer heard the echo. I wasn't lying. I didn't say you were lying. I'm saying I don't hear it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <different>. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is this going to be a thing now? Do me a favor. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be a thing now. You do. <laughs> It could be. I don't know. Sometimes shit just happens. Now, I did have a weak signal indicator for a second. Hmm. So maybe that had something to do with it. Yeah, I don't know. I just I was just hearing myself. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't hearing, hearing Tanner when he talked. I was hearing me when I talked, but it would go away when I view you. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> Weirdness, y'all. This is the strange world of the internet that we operate in. It's crazy. It's crom messing with you, and remember the rules don't matter and the points don't count. So, <laughs> all right, we uh, we're at that point in the show where we're going to uh, open it up to come in and remember to join us on the panel. All you got to do is bring a meme. So pops is going to drop the link for you, and you are invited. <laughs> <laughs> Come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> you made me waste some dank. <laughs> my perp, my perp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's bring out your friend of mine, Mr. <laughs> Stephen B. of Bullcat hey, Videos. Hey, Stephen. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. How, how y'all doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. <laughs> poor, poor Pops. You're doing are you, good, brother. Are you saying you're doing some ugly this morning? Do you know what this stands for, Doc? U-G-L-Y. You ain't got no alibi. You no. ugly. Yeah, no. you ugly. No. Do you know what the letters stand for, Doc? No, no, I, I, I don't, Pops. I don't. You gotta love yourself. And if you don't, you a miserable motherfucker all the time. <clears throat> Am I echoing now? I just got the low signal thing again. I don't hear it. I don't hear any echoes. So I would have to be uh, talking. Uh, no, I don't hear it. For you. So, so what's up, Steven? I got about like three memes for you. All right, share yeah, your screen. Yeah, bring them. Right. Share right. your screen with us. All right, here we go. Make it bigger. I don't Hold on. Let's... That's what she said. Hold your control key and roll your roller up. Here. Uh, so Trust control me. Key. Oh, nope. That's not oh. I like that. All it, right. It says farted. Siri woke up and asked to repeat. Mission, Mission accomplished. accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next. Because <laughs> cats are just that way. What's next? What's next? Look, Stephen be having fun right now. He's like, yeah. <laughs> Look, man, my son asked me about two or three years ago, and keep in mind he's thirty years old, so he wasn't a kid. But he said, "He said, Dad, is it wrong that I still laugh at fart humor?" And I'm like, "Son, there will never no. be a time in a male's life when farts are not funny. Just say it, unless you're caught in the elevator with a really nasty one. Yeah, but you'll still laugh." <laughs> Not until you get out. When, when you let your mom cut your hair and she tells you what a handsome young man you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I have photos from the day. <laughs> I burned all those photos from mom's hair. And my mom's the reason I had long hair all my life. Oh, you did that one. <laughs> <doing that shit. laughs> so I'm going to have to message, uh, message uh, this one uh, to you, Doc. Uh, send it to Pops. Or, all right. Send yeah. Pops. Listen, um, I think I was in kindergarten, Pops. And, and I address this to Pops because we're of a certain age. And uh, <clears throat> I don't, to, to their dying days, each parent swore the other one did it, but I ended up bald in kindergarten 
Yeah, was, and, I know who did that to me. It was mom. <laughs> and, and, well, my mom and my dad said, no, it's all good. You look like Yul Brenner. If you don't know who Yul Brenner is, go look it up. <laughs> famous actor that was bald. In other words, he looked like he looked now. So, yeah. <laughs> but in kindergarten. So I went walking in the door. And at first, it was the tears, you know. It was snot bubbles. <laughs> I go walking into kindergarten. And children are the most malicious creatures up. on earth. Because and a truckload of evil was poured out on me that day. <laughs> and I have never forgotten it. But each parent to their dying day swore the other one did it. And I have no memory it was so traumatic. So, you know, just say it. The homemade haircut, no deal. As a matter of fact, let me extend this story because it's an absolutely true story. Many of you may know I've been married more times than Solomon with considerably less success. Wife number one. Her mother was a cosmetologist. Wife number two, her sister was a cosmetologist. Wife number three was a cosmetologist. So, you know, hmm. I think now. I'm a cosmetologist and you still butt up. <laughs> I think that what happened was subconsciously, um, I was just trying to seek refuge from bad haircuts. What do you think? I'm trying to get that, Stephen, but it's in a weird format, dude. Uh, what did you do? It's like, elevator farts are epic. Tried. I hit a crowd in Houston on an way. express elevator that didn't stop for 18 floors. Ooh. Score! And the best part was, it was a drop and run moment. I turned and waved as the door shut. <laughs> 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 Listen, it was me. <laughs> men are, are, hey, we find farts so funny, we classify them. There's slappers, there's squeakers, there's growlers, there's SBDs, uh, there's howlers. You know, there, there's the you better check yourself because I think you just. You guys remember the fan, <laughs> the fan story that I told you about the dude that walked behind the fan and got the other guy sitting in front of it. That same yes. guy made a dude puke. In his car. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> in his car, he you know it was like he farted in the car and kept the windows up, and then finally let dude out, and dude bailed out the car and puked all over. Dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that guy was like I said, they're funny afterwards. Yes. Some of them are just got uh, 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 god awful. <laughs> I've, I've told this one before. I'll tell it again. My dad. Uh, back in the day, he, he he when he was young, he was an athlete. He was an All American football player, um, but then you know he was an educator, so sedentary lifestyle. He put on weight and he couldn't shake it. So before there was banding like they have now, they used to do something called gastric resection, okay, and, you. and they just cut out part of your stomach and tied it directly into your colon. Well, the side effect of that was for the next twenty years, my dad could fart, <laughs> and I mean. He could fart his alma mater. He could whistle Dixie. Uh, he, he, he could sustain longer than Pavarotti. And oh, man. He, he was coaching a basketball team that was on its way to the state tournament. And so he asked me to drive his car down behind him as he drove the bus with the basketball team. And so we're on the interstate and we're driving along and suddenly the bus's emergency lights come on and it pulls over. And I pull over behind it, and the kids come falling off the bus, screaming. Ah! Well, my dad gets off, and he's laughing his ass off. And I, I walk up there, and he said, "Yeah, they thought it was cute, let their little BB farts go, and they were tee hee hee <laughs> about farts." And I kept warning them, "You need to stop," and they didn't. <laughs> so, switching over to my brother's account of the story, he says, "Dad leaned over." And did one of his howlers. Now, we called the howler the ones that started off where you go, what is that noise? But it continues until it becomes <laughs> loud. <laughs> and he let that seat slapper go. And there was a dead silence on the bus for about five seconds until the aroma hit. And then there was gagging, there was puking, and then he pulled over and they all fell off the bus. My dad... In other words, was in the Hall of Fame for farts. A legend. That's for you, Dad. Stephen B. I got it up there. One more coming. Here we go. Bam. 
You know what your problem is, Jason? You go after too many girls. I've been chasing the same chick for like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and yes, absolutely. You can hear it over the bus motor. Uh, my dad used to get a kick out of uh, the assistant principal where he was principal. He would let an SBD go going down the hall and then be the first one to complain about it. He goes, son of a bitch. And his, his uh, assistant principal's name was Blaine McElfresh. And he go, Mac, <laughs> man, what have you been eating? What the hell is wrong with you? And he would throw him under the bus every time, and he had the whole staff believing it. <laughs> Q, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you left this floor. There are overlays in there, Doc, the bottom floor there. Okay. That's uh, these are the ones that, that Q sent us. Yes, but let's take a look at what Q's doing. Look at that. Oh, oh. he's working on some blade. Uh -oh. Speak of the devil. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see which memes Q has brought us today. Nice. If you want to fuck like a champion, it all starts with a hearty breakfast. I ate three bowls of this shit, and now I can fuck like a rabid mongoose. <laughs> I, you know, hats off to the first time ever you has invoked. <laughs> the content, content in the following show, show expresses the opinion opinions of well. so no one really, but certainly not that of the Madness Comic Network, its sponsors, contributors, staff, or third cousins. It is intended for mature audiences. We warned you. We warned you. You Dr. have to start the show with that one this morning. <laughs> what else? Warning. Yeah. Low flying owls. Lost you all. <laughs> 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 See, that is doubly funny because we literally, there's a family of owls that live around my house. I live in a little bowl valley and mm -hmm. they live in the trees surrounding the valley. And I have a chihuahua and I have feared for this chihuahua because of those owls. Well, I talked to the uh, ornithologist, ornitholo the bird people. And they said, <laughs> ornithologist. No, no. Yes, they said the the uh, the owls won't mess with your dog. They will only eat what they can swallow in one bite, unless they're starving. So that's the mice and whatever. So they pass them as the you know little pellets. I was like, okay, good. So just keep the chihuahua fat, and she'll be safe. <laughs> you get a Taco Bell. <laughs> if I see an owl wearing a oh, sombrero, damn it! Now I got a craving for Taco Bell. <laughs> Yes, I'm into BDSM, beasts, dinosaurs, and sea monsters. Yes, <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Don't you love how the the History Channel in the daytime is all about history, then at night they're about the history you don't know. The UFOs built the pyramids, and you know Megalodon still exists. And mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like. The History Channel goes from being a History Channel to being the Sci-Fi Network at night. <laughs> Putting All out right. stuff better than the Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> oh my God, choke on this. Choke on this. <laughs> Jeez. Jeez. Oh my hey God. Oh. Uh, the, interesting about this, um, the interesting about this meme, this meme comes from a, a comic strip from an actual <laughs> history event of known as the Bone Wars. It's between it's a conflict between those two um, Titan paleontologists in those days. You got O.C. Charles Marsh, uh, O'Neill Charles, Charles Marsh, and then there's uh, Edward Drinker Cope. And mm -hmm. in the beginning, these two are pretty good buddies in the beginning, but then afterwards, because Edward Drinker Cope was a hot-headed guy, he, think, he thought he knew everything, he knew his paleontology, but Marsh, on the other hand, he was an academic professor, and he knew right or wrong when he found himself in a... Oh, bless oh, you. Bless Pardon me while I sneeze my head off. <laughs> <laughs> when he, when nice Charles page. pointed out the, the complete skeleton of a plesiosaur, a, a, Marine reptiles in prehistoric time. They said, "Oh yeah, they, uh, you found uh, you got the nice skeleton, but the 
the head it should have the head you put it it's at the it's the other side of the body <laughs> <laughs> oh wow wow that looks great and he Steven. was humiliated Thank you. And he was humili- humiliated. Uh, Cope was really humiliated. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> you gotta love it when one of your peers throws you under the bus like that, especially mm-hmm. when they do it in public. You know, that, yep. that's always some fun. Good to see you, Shadowhawk. Good morning. Morning, morning. Let's see. What, what is this? You know, it wasn't noticeable when people walk in asking who's making coffee. Out of shit. Copy <laughs> <laughs> Luwak. <laughs> oh my god, that was good. Oh. Copy Luwak, the actual coffee that made out of shit. Yeah, I'm not ever doing that, baby. Never. Mm-hmm. But look, I'm, one. Uh, you know? No, 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 no. Yeah, you got to. You get- no, I don't. No, no. Yeah. There, there's, yeah, there's totally no part. Different. There's no part of my DNA that says I must eat monkey shit. That's never going to happen. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, I mean, you know, a few if, times. Come on now. Well, I mean, I guess if the monkey's big enough <laughs> and we're locked in a room together. <laughs> King Kong. <laughs> How is that fair, by the way, that a chimpanzee can be half your size and 10 times your strength? Where does that even come from? How is that fair? He must have working out. <laughs> little, little anorexic looking thing with a pop belly and long ropey arms but he can bench press a Buick. How's that a thing? How did that even happen? <laughs> well, uh, uh, that makes sense, you, right? You yeah. Hmm? What? Looks, looks can be very deceiving. Well, yeah, but come on now. The scary part is the first thing our bodies make in the womb is the anus. That's because that's the business end. That's the business <laughs> end. <laughs> Taking care of business every day. Every day. Taking well, care of business. Wait, working wait, overtime. Sh- Work out. You, you can't sing that. You can't sing that. Bad Company is one of those that will strike you. Oh. <clears throat> Badco, Ozzy, Sabbath, Dio, and Kiss are notorious striking people so you gotta yeah and, and, and every time rich is on our channel it's fucking somebody singing kiss yep yep leg it up <laughs> you would think <laughs> that that rich sings so badly that they wouldn't even be able to detect it they might not you know, you know, you know. oh man yeah <laughs> one can hope one can hope you know the algorithm can uh, broken glass here. The uh, I always picture in my mind some basement dwelling zit clad mama's boy sitting in their basement all day watching a stream going, mm-hmm. Come on, do something I can strike, do something I can strike. And then they get bored because they can't find anything, so they just make some shit up, you know. <laughs> they probably Those people, do. If you're watching this kid and that's you, there is help for you. Join the military today. Become a man. You can do it. <laughs> Hoorah. I don't know if today's military is exactly the union. Or is it, I'm just, it's, listen, it's I not know where you're going with this. It's, it's not, not too far it, from the truth. It's not what it was. When, you know, when we're facing Russia to the east and China to the west, and you're having mandatory pronoun meetings we're in trouble we're big, 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 you're not exactly doing force readiness just saying no. Do you remember- I, I was told that i was a dinosaur and i was what's wrong with the modern army oh my god oh, uh, how exactly bro. is the modern army going to kill the enemy i'm just wondering how this works well i mean they keep updating the uh you know the <laughs> weapons of war, so I mean, yeah, but like, we've got the firepower. We just we're, we're still we can't don't have anyone who can operate. The other guy's identity. <laughs> Identify him as the enemy and learn this. How can they identify the enemy when they can't identify themselves? Identify them as the enemy. Sorry, did I say that? Don't worry about (laughs) their pronoun. Don't worry about who, nothing about them. You have to identify them as the enemy or you're going to die on a battlefield alone. In boot camp. (laughs) 
Back in our day, Pops, and I'm sure in Tanner's day, too, all the cultural sensitivity training you got was delivered in one sentence in boot camp. There's no black, brown, or white. There's light green, dark green, light blue, dark blue. That's it. Don't ever fucking forget it. That's it. That's all you ever needed. In my day, we were all green. Yes. And... <laughs> That's all that mattered. Light green, dark green. But, by the way, <laughs> go watch No Time for Sergeants, starring Andy Griffith and Don Knotts and that other guy, I forget his name. They literally had the first one there when he said, that is not a man or woman, that is an officer. So then they, they were wanting to test his eyes, and this good-looking officer walked in, and he goes, I don't say neither no man nor woman that there's an officer. <laughs> <laughs> and that was post-World War II, guys. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. I'm going to step away for just a moment. I a, think I a, pack, a package being delivered on my front door that is my paper to continue my work on Pariah Blood and Mud. So let me go get this. Oh, I'll be right good. Uh-oh. In the words of Paul. The original intention of the film was just for my personal use, but I thought with it being such a unique thing that I'd like to offer it to anybody who wants to see it. Things like that. And it's just a unique film of him. He says, I beat you. He said, they say we came in under the dead of heat. He says, that's not true because I beat you. And the American said, well, he says, if you like to think so, he says, but I know a real story. He says, I, he says, I, I know I clearly won that one. back out picking up whatever box he was picking up and he won't be back he can't get back to his chair I don't know what's thinking himself. the doctor is in <laughs> baby <laughs> hey, hey I forgot I had to hey, hey, hey. about that it, it's almost time to wrap this booger up for the week um I want to thank Pops for coming out and sitting in for uh, the lovely Kate, who is busy yeah, waiting I'm on. Not near as pretty as Kate. I no, you're you're not. I mean, none no, of us are. None of us are. I can't fill those shoes. I'll uh, speak for yourself. I'm pretty hot. Damn it. Hey, wait, wait. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> that my face. If we can't pimp him out, what good is he? <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <clears throat> I want to thank the chat for coming to hang with us. Uh, thank you to our guests, Stephen B. and Quentin. Always good to have you guys come out. Quentin, we got to get you on camera one day. 
One of these Hi. Days. Come up here and say goodbye. Yep, come on up. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Here we go. Say goodbye to everybody. Oh, 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 oh. You didn't say anything. Oh. You're just going to try and punch me and kick me. In. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to lay all out and get fur all over me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> man who got me last night he got his funny he's got his fan right up in my funny bone dude it was such a like shock you know what i mean it's uh-huh. like like pulled it like pulled his face and he <laughs> like, yanked my arm out of his mouth dude. um but That's yeah it was right up in the funny bone that My dog watches every word that comes out of your mouth, Bob. I mean, he just stares intently at you. Oh, I know. To he him. Must have bite my face. You know, he's listening. He's listening to you. Oh, he's and he, fun. by the way, when a dog does, oh, that, we woke up to them fighting this morning at five a.m. Yeah, a dog okay. wants you to say the words they want to hear when they're doing that. My <laughs> my my dog would do it, and they're wanting you to say potty or treat. And if you say those, they'll go. Did you did you just did you say that word? And then you say it again, and they lose their minds. Yeah, that's these, these dogs understand everything. You say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything. Raptor it's dogs. it's weird. We'll be talking about one of them. He'll come around the corner. And, yeah, you think so, Mom? <laughs> you, know, you can just tell the look <laughs> on their face. They're like, I heard that. You know, True um, that. It's weird, man. They are definitely part of the family. Yeah. yeah. I think next yeah, week we'll I'll have to put the chihuahua outside because she thinks the studio is hers. But I'm going to bring the big puppy in so everybody can see her. I brought her out on my channel when she was a little bitty puppy. Uh huh. I remember <clears throat> the yellow thing. Yep. I want to bring her out now. That, now that she's a horse, I want to bring her out because <clears throat> she's <laughs> big, goofy elbows and knees. Um, a horse. <laughs> she's a freaking horse. <sighs> Yeah, see, they do. And, and yeah. Roddy's are especially that way. They, um, I had a friend that rented a room out of my house for a while, and she had a Roddy, and that thing ran her. Mm-hmm. It ran her. She basically did what it wanted her to do all the time. There was no, yes. you know what I mean? She didn't run nothing. <laughs> she didn't run nothing. I never saw a person that was completely controlled by their animal before. Yeah, they listen. It happens. It happens. Our, this listen. The freaking Chihuahua runs this house. <laughs> you'll get a Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll get a, You'll be in a Taco. I need to get some Taco Bell. All right. So uh, anyway, I want to thank the chat. Good to see everybody. Thank you for popping in. Be sure you head on over to Indiegogo and get Pariah Blood and Mud a sign up. Uh, there is an exclusive trading card available to you. The page has been updated with new images. and uh, So get over there and give it some love. Uh, give the doctor some love. I would really appreciate it. Also, Check out below son. in the description. Everybody's contact information for pretty much that runs pretty much every show on the network is down there. Everybody, you can find them all. You know, um, network people. That's how it grows. That's, that's it, all. baby. All right, so Q, have a great week, my friend. Good to see you as always. Thank you. Peace out. And Stephen B, always a pleasure to see you, sir. Mm -hmm. Peace out. And with that, Pops, play us out of here. All right, check it out. This weekend, y'all know what's up. How do you end this thing? How do you put the where there was the brakes on this bus? I forgot. Jazz hands. Jazz hands are Have a good night.
Comic Books for Kids provides comic books to kids in hospitals and cancer centers across the U.S. It's a place where we can all work together to make sure every child has a comic book. 100% of all proceeds go towards the kids. It's about making a difference, and while they're in the hospital, allowing them to fly like a superhero, battle dragons, or rescue teddy bears. We are in every state in the country and now support over 160 hospitals. Every month, we add more. Visit CB4K.org. Let's go! 